Hey everybody, Jessica, Pretty Prints and Paper, and it is almost February, so I wanted to take you through my January in my bullet journal and talk about the lessons that I've learned and how that is going to inform my next month. If you're new to the channel, I talk about bullet journaling, creative planning, alcohol ink, and calligraphy, all so that you can create a system that is unique and useful and yours. So let's get started. January, of course, kicks off the new year, which I use to anchor myself in my new mantra for the year, which is orchestrate your life. And I tried something new. I tried a Franken light. It is inspired by Brian Hazard's version of the Franken log and Franken light. And I flipped it so that instead of going down, it was going across. So it made more sense to me in my brain. I did use the star days a lot, but I didn't find myself putting in a bunch of the tasks for the month as I went. So that tells me that there's something not quite clicking with me there. So that's something that I'm going to adjust and figure out how to achieve the goal of clearing tasks for the month but in a different way this is my time chart I'll put a link in the card so that you can see how I use those I didn't quite use these I have a work bullet journal so that's where I've been taking notes so maybe this is not the place to keep them so I will migrate this list over into my work bullet journal I started using the page for this week to capture the task that I had to do along the way and took a week to just do freeform dailies like the original bullet journal system recommends, which was really freeing. After I watched a video from Brian Hazard about something that he enjoyed doing in his last bullet journal, I was inspired to try that myself and do the 1 through 31 for the days in January for memories one a day. This is more like the events that you did that day so that you can quick look through and just see like, wow, January has already been crazy. And then accompanying that is just thoughts of the day, like one key thought that I had and it, again it's kind of cool to look back to see what happened. As you can see things are not always super super nice. I still use these post-it notes. I still try to do reflection to see what worked from week to week. And then this of course coordinates with the sticker kit that I used in my passion planner weekly. I have my dedicated tasks for the day, my top tasks. I was tracking my stuff throughout the day in terms of wellness and my energy level. Some days I would start off strong and just peter out by the end of the day. And you can see I just kind of turn the page and do whatever I need to do. It doesn't bother me that some of these things are kind of mixed in. And you can see that, you know, I stopped doing that daily tracker just for these couple of weeks. Had to letter that quote from Amanda Gorman in her poem. So what I can tell you about this week was that Sunday I had been really stressed about getting a workshop put together. I stayed up way too late doing it, froze in my own imposter syndrome, and I did not get to bed until late, and then was so stressed and full of anxiety that I didn't fall asleep until 2.30. I skipped my whole weekly prep, and I paid for it throughout the entire week. I regretted it so much, and part of it is that stress, I could not control it, but that is the rippling effect that it had on my entire week, and also probably because I'm getting older, and I can't handle uh, as much of that the caffeine and the energy and all that uh, it took me days and days and days to recover I had to keep trying to go back to uh, a regular sleep schedule but I mean it really threw me for the rest of the week so that lesson is that I'm never messing around with that sleep schedule and trying to coach myself into better maybe procrastination habits and limiting thoughts around the work that I was trying to do so that I can tackle it a little bit earlier this is where I'm at right now. 
Um, I love this sticker kit. I just think that they're so fun. And it's easy to just add into your bullet journal. I love it. You don't have to use it. Please don't feel like you have to use it. So this is where I'm at. And now I'm doing a bunch of the monthly reflections that are in my passion planner and through the Moxie Life. And let me show you what that looks like. So in the passion planner, there are a bunch of questions at the monthly reflection, and I've been trying to be better about keeping with these. I sometimes skip them in the past, but if you don't stop and reflect, you're never going to hone in on the steps that you can take to make your life what you want it to be, your system what you want it to be. And I know that last year I was so lost looking at other people's systems and how easy it seemed like that they were using these to achieve their goals. And I was stuck feeling like, oh, do I want to use a passion planner? Do I want to use a ring? bound or I use a disc bound and getting so caught up in the social media stuff that I wasn't stopping and reflecting what is working for me, not for everybody else, what's working for me. So the reflection piece is critical for myself, but also the bullet journal system so that you can just uh, avoid keeping on recreating the wheel toward nothing. So this was really lovely to just sit down and look at this month. I lose track of the things that happened to me so quickly, and it was really nice to just kind of look through and stop and recognize that there's been a lot of stuff that's happened this month already and to take time to translate that into what I want to take with me into February, what I want to leave behind, and what I can learn. In the Moxie Life Companion Notebook, of course it goes by quarter and I have it tucked in on this side of my agenda cover and uh, I wanted to touch base on how I was doing with these monthly goals. I made progress on a lot of them, but not on all of them, and that is okay. I'm not going to sit here and shit on myself because I didn't do all these things. We are still in a pandemic, and as a three on the Enneagram, which is the achiever, I know that this is a dark place for me to go to and spiral down, oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, I should do this, I should do that, and we gotta stop doing that to ourselves. So trying to look at this in a much more compassionate way as just an observation, I'll make note of it, and I'm not going to feel bad about what I did or did not do. I will celebrate the things I accomplished, but I'm not going to languish in feeling like I'm a failure because I didn't do other things. Reviewing some of these, and I had, you know, been up to date on like the weeks. And again, because I was so messed up on Sunday, did not do these reviews appropriately for that week. So what I did was just on Thursday, I finally was able to look at my week and identify some of the things that I did in each of these areas, more like an acknowledgement rather than an intentional planning on Sunday. This was helpful anyway. I still found some things that I could recognize that I had done throughout the week in order to make progress, and that was cool. And then being able to use this as a launching point then for what I'll do in the next month. Some of the questions that are in here are duplicates of the ones that I'd already answered in my passion planner, so I intentionally chose not to go into this. But then for February, I based off of how I was doing in January and thinking about, are these the right goals? Are these the right things that I wanna be working toward? And frankly, this can change for you every week, every month, it doesn't matter, but that every time you get a chance to think about, is this what I actually want? absolutely listen to yourself. If there's extra friction because you're not jiving with that goal, let it go. Life is too short for you to like continue on with goals that don't matter to you. So take a moment and uh, just choose the things that keep you going on a path that you actually want. So uh, in February, I'm going to still work on increasing my time without my phone, having silence every day. I have this habit of having videos and podcasts playing in the background all the time, and I want to just let that stimulus decrease. I think I've built myself up to this point and I want to wean myself back down. So burning some incense and letting that silence take over and giving my mind some space. This is the hardest section for me, which is the fun and recreation. And looking back, being like, okay, what are the things that I do for fun without any kind of like achiever reward? And that is so challenging when you've monetized your hobbies and you can do new things and work things at all times. So I'm trying to be more focused in this area. And I would not have known that if I hadn't have taken time to look back at January to see where my time went. And then work and learning is kind of always on my mind, so this fills in pretty easily. All the other things like 
knowing that I'm committing to sleeping by now 1230 instead of one, pushing it back a little bit further. And for wellness, I, the more that I try to set like high discipline goals for myself, the more that I am going to fall short. So what has been kind of working for me the last couple weeks is meeting the minimums. If I'm not going to be doing a full on bar workout, at least I'm going to be doing these 20 push ups. I'm going to do a walk a week and I'm going to aim for like this one workout. And then most of the time I can manage to dance around to a song or two in the morning. So these are those minimums that I can do to get myself moving, feel good about it. And then if I do more, that's great. Lastly, I'm getting PT for my hip, like something's really wrong with it. And I'm really hoping that they give me some good answers so that this will go away. I took my youth for granted and then my, your body betrays you after 30 years old and it's all downhill from there. Um, uh, so looking for ways to take better care of my body, especially working from home. And of course, being able to expand on my spiritual personal growth. I'm going to continue working on my anti-racism goals. And at the policy level, there is emailing Congress. And I've created a list on my email to quickly email my representatives. I know I could use an app, but I'm a little verbose when it comes to things like issues. So I wanted to be able to email them. And then looking for a list of causes and creating some priority about which issues and skills that I have to contribute into a more direct way. We'll see where that takes me. Financial, this has been on my mind a lot lately and trying to think about not only like financial wellness in terms of like taking care of myself, but also taking care of other people and being sustainable with my money. Where does it go? And of course, physical environment, trying to make sure that I am still taking care of the space that I live in since I'm here all the time and destashing and donating my stuff. So we'll see how this goes for this month. So based on some of those things, I'm going to think about what parts of the bullet journal system and my planning system worked really well. What other parts are the things I need to commit to doing a little bit differently so that it flows a little better, less friction, and I can use it more frequently. Some of the things I'm thinking about already are changing up my monthly log. I really need to think about what is going to get me in the monthly mindset for my priorities. I need to think about what habits are going to be the most important into getting me in a more healthy space. It's a little less cluttered up here. And then hopefully that will translate into achieving the rest of my other goals and making time for some more fun so that I can just kind of let go of that work space a little bit more and tune into just having a fun time. So some of that stuff is going to be in the actual planners. And then some of that stuff is really the approach that I need to take toward my planners. So thinking about the key habits that are going to make the most difference and honing down on those and then setting up uh, some of the rhythms that will lead me into some of those processes and approaches. So let's see what that looks like. So first thing that I do is I go into my passion planner because it already has the monthly laid out for me. I have my digital calendar, of course, but I really like being able to use this in a tactile way and lay out what the month looks like specifically so that I can look at the key events that are happening throughout the month to see where my time is going. And then after that, do my meal matrix over it. If you don't know what a meal matrix is, I'll leave a video in the cards, but it's a method by the lazy genius to figure out the easiest way for you to put together a meal plan. And it has honestly changed my game. And so I do this every month now and I've been doing it since October. I lay these key events out so I know when I need to make my meals and lay that out with some transparent sticky notes. And I keep the rest of them up front in my passion planner right up here so that I can kind of move them as I need to. This remains flexible and I'm not kind of nailed in to any of these particular meals. And then at the bottom, I like to try to get a sense of what are the main projects that I need to focus on this month. These are the big rocks before I add in all of the little ones. So I've got the big events and the commitments that I have made and it's Lunar New Year. So I'm very excited about that for February. I am obviously very single and so very much focused on the Lunar New Year and celebrating that with my family. The underneath here are just the different major pieces like for my work for pretty prints and then for myself and then after I get this set up I set up my monthly in my bullet journal 
This month is going to be a major Lunar New Year theme. I'm using washi that I've gotten from Wonton in a Million and going again with the spread that I really liked from January, which is my log and my thoughts. Using the stickers from the version 2 bullet journal notebook, I have the days of the week lined up here and the dates here so that every day I can just log the things that happened that day just really quick and then on this side maybe a key anchoring thought that I had that day and I'm looking forward to being able to look through these at some point and seeing what happened this February. And then building more on that is checking in more with my body. There's a lot of things that I was trying to keep track of in my daily logs, but I want to put them all here so it's easy to read just like it is for my log and my thoughts. These are things that um, I want to get better at because I ignore some of the symptoms in my body just so that I can keep going, but I'm learning that that's not a great thing. So here's where I'm going to put things that I am feeling like in my hip or if there's aches or other symptoms, I can log it in here. It'll be easy for me to check later on. Here I'm going to be looking at not only those projects that I had listed in my passion planner, but listing out the next couple steps. This is probably related to Get Things Done by David Allen, uh, which I still haven't read. Shocking. But I used to do this in my bullet journal in the past, and it was helpful just to be able to have the project name and then maybe the two or three things that I need to have done this month in order to move that project forward or be meaningfully thinking about it. So again, there's this, just this nice little theme that I'm doing along with that. And then the daily logs are going to have the matching stickers with the sticker kit in my passion planner. I still have post-it notes in here for that I kind of carry forward because it's something I need to address but haven't properly migrated into my plans yet. So this page will kind of be the catch-all for the things I need to do at some point this week and then build that into the dailies and be able to incorporate these into the plans I have going forward. So these are small tweaks. These aren't major shifts. I do not make super big changes to my layouts every single month or every single week because I'm tinkering with an approach that works for me for the most part. And I'm just doing these little changes in order to make it a little bit better. That's kind of the point every single time. And without this process of stopping and thinking about it, you might continue doing something that just doesn't work. So other things that are outside of the planner that you might be doing are monthly check-ins with your finances, monthly check-ins with your wellness goals, monthly check-ins with kind of your cleaning and seeing where that's at. February is a big month for cleaning for me because of Lunar New Year and I'm going to try and get things tidied up for the holiday. But each month gives us a new opportunity to check in and see where we're at. And if you didn't do the things that you thought you were going to do, that is fine. That's okay. You do not need to be constantly performing and doing and achieving to have a meaningful life. If your uh, daily log becomes a journal of the things that you're feeling and watching and thinking about that day, that's awesome. If you're just drawing something that you saw somewhere, that's okay too. The whole point of the bullet journal is to kind of be able to log your thoughts. And when you look back later, you can see the trends and pick out the things that stand out to you so that you can either do more with it or change track. That's all it is. And to remove the judgment from it, I think has been the biggest lesson for me in my entire bullet journal practice. We'll see what we do for the month. How are you doing? Have you set your February up? What does it look like? What are your go-to spreads? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, you might like some of my other videos about Moxie Life goal planning or my other setups from January. So check those out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.